It's such a lovely song, isn't it? Hello. I was grooving to that. Look, look Isn't that look nice? Doesn't that make you feel like look you want to just cruise along nicely and do? I lay a rap like down to it. You should hear the rap I lay down to it. There's a lot of X words, a lot of swearing in my version. <laughs> a lot of f bombs. Yeah, man. you just swear the whole. You're just swearing the whole way along. Is that the Every idea? Every other word. I try. I try. You're starting a new genre. It's called lounge rap. It's awesome. Lounge awesome. rap. Lounge rap. Yeah, well, that's a new genre for Chris. Uh, he can try it out. It's a Kids on the Escalator podcast. It is the Ooh. second last episode of the season, gents. And then we're going to break and, and, and all that shit. So we got mm-hmm. this week and next, and then it's summertime. Mm-hmm. Summertime, summertime. So we're going to have a big soup extravaganza next week. But this week, we're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to mm-hmm. have a really rad guest with us. But first, before we go anywhere, gentlemen, before we do anything, Before we do anything. Nerds on ice. Ice, ice, baby. I gave them one. They won their one. That's it. There you go. So, so you know what? Do you guys have any uh, hockey sayings that kind of tick you off? I I, I got two that that, that annoy me. One is, and this one's, one's been around forever. And he dances over the blue line. There's no dancing in hockey. Stop it. He doesn't dance over the blue line. The second one I hate is when they call the puck a biscuit. I don't know. It just bothers me. It's not a biscuit. <laughs> well, I'll are, tell you right now. Do you guys now, have any sayings that bug you? I, just, I don't like dancing over the blue yep. line and the biscuit. Go. Yeah, I you, got one right now. And it's it's. I'm laying it out there right now. I'm mm-hmm. just laying it out. Are you okay. ready? Yeah. Enough with the fucking celly. Oh, oh, the celly. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the celly's a little. Oh, that's a, that's a celly. All right, here we go. So start listing your favorite bands then. Here we go. Uh, Tragically Hip, ACDC. Like, that's a Shelly. Like, it's, it's like it's like they have the same seven sayings. Oh, it was great, man. Uh, uh, Jonesy had a great Shelly over there. Hey, Smash my head against the wall. Hey, Smash my head against the wall. Hey, bud. Yeah, yeah. But, and again, we know who we can thank for that. Uh, that the Sally, whose uh, whose fault is it for Sally? No, it's it's more the hockey sings, and I love them. I, Letter Kenny, man, they they brought the the beauty of all these hockey uh, phrases back into the uh, Canadian vernacular, especially in the advertising form, because you see a lot of that now in just regular ads, and that's that's a Letter Kenny influence, and they're actually doing a spinoff, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, um, Shorzy uh, from from Letter Kenny. So yeah, and enough with the, and the nicknames. Everyone puts a Y, like the most unoriginal Jonesy. thing. It's like the guy's name is My, Mike Smith. Oh, oh, Smith C. Smith. What Smith, happens when yeah. what happens when they already have a, an E on the end of their name? What do they call them? They, there's, there's two ways to do it, right? Isn't yeah, there? I've heard this. There, there is a legitimate like they actually have. A, if you do have a Y on your on your last name, I think it's just they they drop it. Yeah, it's like so. Yeah, that'd be yeah. If it's Smithies, so Smith, original. Smith, it's like Smith. So original. Well, yeah, you know. Come on, you- it would be it. It would be kind of funny if they were like, were like they, they went to, into an interview because they're eating pizza and they're being assholes right now. Like they're kind of doing. If they actually called them by like, like a real nickname instead like, of just like Barnsey. Fart letter. That guy farts. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. fart letter. No, it's not. That's Malcolm. Fart. No, it's fart, fart letter, man. Fartsy. Why do they call fartsy? Him fartsy? <laughs> oh. Hey, by the way, Lord. Well, I want to know who started this rumor that the Habs are going to, if they lose, that they're going to have a, a consolation parade in Montreal. Oh, wow. Yeah, I saw that. that. I yeah. saw that on one of the the, the tweets today. That is, is that code like, for riot? Well, no, I, they <laughs> somebody somewhere had come up with this. You know, they're going to have a parade if the Habs don't win. Just to sort of like, you know, good job, guys. You, you went further than we thought you would, you know. And, yeah. Well, it's like the the participation. Award what they do for the kids parade. in soccer now, right? Yeah, it's per, yeah. it's killing. It's, well, I think yeah. there'll be I a get, celebration in the streets, but uh, or the, they'll have a parade if they lose. But it's not going to be, gonna be the kind of parade that everybody's going to enjoy. They're going to riot because they like to do that in Montreal, don't they? Hey, and I'm, in Vancouver too, right? I'm just I'm just happy that you know it's looking like Tampa's going to win it on their home ice. And I was talking mm-hmm. to a buddy last night, and I said, you know, last year they won the cup in an empty arena essentially mm. as part of the whole COVID thing. And that sucks. Like you think about it. If you've, if you've played the game for your entire life to, to get the cup, you know, that moment 
and you don't have the the crowd there like that sucks so i kind of i'm i'm i'm, I'm hoping they probably will because i think they were just like toying with montreal last night and uh to take it back to tampa so you know what though if they would have played like that last night the whole series we'd have a series they i watched the first period and they were, they were, montreal was getting thumped in that first period man i ugh. Montreal, but I won't they played their best game of the series, and it's still Tampa. It barely enough. Was a better. I can't believe they beat Vegas. It does. I, I can't. Like, cause we, we were talking about how Toronto, we, we, we can't even talk about Toronto because there's no way they'd get past Vegas. And then Montreal goes, gets past them. It's like, what? I, that's, I can't believe what Montreal's done to be like, and I, I still can't get behind them. But I just, I got to give them kudos, man, for getting, getting by Vegas. I don't know how they did that. I really don't. I'm not going to rewatch it and find out, but <laughs> damn, damn, gentlemen, yeah, we're going, uh, we're going a little bit of uh, alien action tonight and conspiracy theories and a whole bunch of you different. No, I love that stuff. Sweet. With remember, this dude? guy yes. right here, John Guarnieri, coming on Ooh. in here. There we yeah, are, fellow Dean. Got it, fel- what? fellow Dean, fellow Dean good. Blundell Network uh, face. And here we are, yes. Johnny. Thank you uh, for having me on here. I've uh, been following. It was, it was funny the whole D network, the Blundell mm-hmm. network. I, you, I was never before the the last whatever. I'm not even going to mention it, but I was never into really podcast because I was always I thought I was always too busy to. If it's not music, I'm not going to listen to it. But I found, especially with the Blundell network, I have learned more about pop culture or sports betting or <laughs> the. I consider myself a, I'm a huge Boston Bruins fan. Obviously, I love hockey. I play it growing up. But for whatever reason, I listen to the more Canadian news through your shows like yours and some of the other ones on the network. And the passion you guys have for the hockey and the hatred for like certain teams that are Canadian, uh, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty awesome. John, now, given that the, we're talking aliens and conspiracy theories, it is only natural that you being a former Secret Service agent that you are practically blurred out here. Because <laughs> I don't know what's going on with your internet down yonder, but you're pixelated really, it really adds well. To the it kind of, it yeah, kind of adds uh, to the mystique of the show today. It's kind of adding I, to the mystique. Yeah, I don't know. I'm in the middle of a rainstorm, so maybe that's it. Mm. Well, okay. Here. We haven't had, well, it's our off season of rain. It's actually Harpo, which is the weather creator that the government created. So that's what it is. Here we go. (laughs) John, spending his days right now with these guys, Shinedown, as their security guy. Uh, That's Mm -hmm. where uh, we met. We met through Hoogie and and all the rest of it. You came into the network. Barry, of course, the drummer from Shinedown, was my first guest on the music cast. Uh, He's got Spartan Bruce Coffee. Great guy. And John uh, just did some shows with them. So. Welcome aboard, sir. We're going to uh, get into our good friends here and some other things uh, that we're going to that we're going to touch on um, today, just for just for fun. You know what I'm saying? Just for fun. <laughs> hey, uh, hey. Before we go any further, I, I love to acknowledge our people watching at home. So yeah. uh, John is an alien, according to Blue Boy six nine six eight. Karen says it's Agent John Bond. There we mm-hmm. go. And Kim Sutherland. I can. Uh, just with a simple bah ha There we go. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> no, Brant's like this. <laughs> that, that's what that sounds like. Just just so you know, right? You got to translate these properly. They don't make sense. Okay. John, fill us in on what you're all about, where you're from, what's going on, and how you got here. Let's go with full pixelation just to add to the mystique. Yeah. Um, I So my background, I went to a military college called Norwich University in Vermont. It's about 45 minutes south of Burlington. Um, I did the Navy ROTC. And long story short, I was going to commission, but I had a family member get sick. And so I decided uh, to not commission because I wasn't sure where I'd be deployed and stuff like that. Uh, So I kind of put all my eggs in the basket into a three-letter agency. Uh, In my case, I chose Secret Service. And when I graduated in uh, 2000. In eight, I started the process actually in 2007, background checks, polygraphs, psyche valves, all that physical stuff. Uh, then from 2008, so end of 2008, being 2009 to 2014, uh, I was in the Secret Service with uh, President Obama uh, based out of the White House. And so I got to do and see and cool a lot, see and do a lot of cool stuff uh, with different people and different things. And then in 2014, I jumped private uh, and my first client was the first, the two world tours with Nickelback, um, No Fixed Address, and uh, their last album. 
And then in 2018, I jumped into Shinedown, and I've been with Shinedown ever since. Excellent, man. Well, welcome uh, welcome to the show. Kim says, hey, John. Oh, All your you. fans are showing up. You've got one of the most loyal follower- yeah. followings yeah. I've ever seen, man. After uh, after you appeared on the Britain on Tour podcast, heard every uh, every week on the I, uh Dial it's, Network, it's, my the show blew up. It blew up. It's uh, mm-hmm. it's funny because I I don't know if I hit it at the right time. Um, I tried to be very authentic, and I think what a lot of people that don't know me who kind of tuned in for the first time, they see like my background as something sexy, which I guess if I'm the outside looking in, it probably does seem really cool. I'm just dumb to it, but I think that does attract people. And then when they find out who I am and what I do, and I actually am, I, I think a genuinely uh, unique. Uh, hopefully a cool person, uh, people kind of loyal. But any, anything I really do, I'm just really cool and the supporters. And as long as they support everyone and your guys' podcast, I'm going to tell all them to check it out and stuff. So it's super Cheers, awesome. Man. We yeah. really appreciate it, man. We love it. We love it. Um, we're going to get into some fun stuff today. Um, we like to um, – well, this is all about pop culture, but we do music, comics. We do a whole bunch of different things. Now, conspiracy theories and aliens. Man, nice. it's been exciting. It's been exciting for us. Chris is an ancient do you aliens remember, guy. Well, do you remember – I'm so an I, ancient aliens guy. So I, I teach – well, I used to teach like hardcore, man. And then I'd go hardcore all year, man, teach the weekends. And then I'd take like August off. And then always throw about third week of August on my holidays. I'd always dive into something and get a little freaky deaky, right? So this, this was about, man, oh, this was over a decade ago, man. I got into, probably 15 years ago, I, I got into the ancient aliens theory. And I read all of that original book. Uh, what's the original book there? The classic. I'm just blanking on the name of it from, from the late 60s, uh, early 70s. Oh, the, the, oh the, Chariots the, of the Gods, my wife. Yeah, yeah my, Chariots yeah, of the yeah, Gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So then I researched all that, and, and I don't know, Brandon, if you remember, dude, and then I, w- I went off on I Facebook about it, right? Woo, aliens, here here you go, Bible folks, here's what really happened, this makes sense, and, and it all made sense to me, and I remember you, Brent, too, t- texting me and going, hey, man, y'all right over there? <laughs> <laughs> dramatic pause in there, right? But I would, I would, I would always dive into something, really, and I remember when I got into the ancient alien theories and all that stuff, it just, it really, it made sense to me. Because as a kid, learning religion and stuff, I always felt like, because I was a heavy metal kid for one thing, I liked Kiss. Um, so they didn't, I didn't get along with any organized religions as a child or any ways that they thought to begin with. So I didn't understand, I couldn't understand the Bible. A lot of that stuff, like a burning bush talking to somebody. Who's doing the acid now, my friends? You know what I mean? And then in the ancient aliens, but, but then the ancient aliens would, stories would explain that that wasn't a, that wasn't a bush at all. That's just how they interpreted it. And all these things coming from the sky, you know, like, and the way that they interpreted it in, in the ancient alien show spoke to me. And it, and it just, it felt like, okay, now I can understand. It actually was huge. I was like, now I can understand the world a little more. Now I feel like I fit here a little more. And the stories of Vera Kosha being the same person as Jesus and uh, coming out of Lake Titicaca, all that stuff was amazing to me. You and said, it, it really you helped said me. Like, titty. <laughs> yeah, titty, no, dude, what, that, that's a whole other story there too. But, but that whole thing made me feel like I belonged here a little more. Like, because because you get you get church thrown at you like this all the time, right? Here's how you should behave: follow the Bible. And then you read the Bible, and you're like, this does not make any sense at all. This is nuts. <laughs> it is. It's crazy, right? So if, if people are telling you all your life, this is how you're supposed to live, this is how you're supposed to be on Earth, and you don't understand it, especially as a kid, then all of a sudden, you know, somebody comes along and explains it to a guy like me who's a little freaky deaky a little nutty and it just made me feel like i belonged a little more so for for a very creative person like me who's into comic books who's a writer this was life-changing for me and i'm not being dramatic it really was it really was kim's uh, theory is that we're all looking at different parts of the same elephant <laughs> thanks kim. <laughs> right, kim uh john okay john you i mean yeah it's i don't there, the, there's, the idea of there's a uh, lot the ancient aliens like i had robert clotworthy who's the uh, narrator of ancient aliens um on my podcast and we i think it was a great episode but we've been talking ever since about different stuff and you kind of hit on a cool thing there where it's the history of this stuff and how people interpreted interpreted uh different things one of the things i know we wanted to talk about like the flat earth but you go back to centuries where Homer and Greece and the the ancients uh, from China and all these places, how they interpreted the world is how they saw it. And again, just the interpretation of this, like, I don't know if we have the answers. I don't know if we'll ever get them. Um, But it is okay to be acceptable or accept other people's points of view on, say, the different parts of the elephant, where we all are looking at the same thing. We're just looking at it differently. 
Mm-hmm. Um, no, there's, there's something really cool about that. But ancient aliens, anything like that, I just love the historical significance of it uh, versus kind of what the current feeling is now with everything going on. Yeah, definitely. I got a little bit. Vi- I got a little video I can show. Just give me a sec. We'll go. There is some stuff that's kind of floating out there right now. Mike, where are you on the on the alien stuff? What's going on in Brantford? You had aliens over your house or anything? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we're still dealing with a zombie apocalypse downtown, which is most. <laughs> but uh, no, it's 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 funny because uh, my my extended family, like through my wife, uh, I I have sort of uh, I want to say I've married into. Uh, a very cool family that, you know, my one sister-in-law, she's very much into the paranormal. And my other sister-in-law, actually, um, I've I discovered this over the last couple of years, was was sort of following, or I don't want to say into, but uh, had a, a belief in the, the whole Blue Avians uh, thing, which I haven't done a whole lot of reading on. And John, maybe, like, you obviously are aware of the, that whole, the what is it the it's something to do with the vibration uh this whole race yep. here so that's you know i'm i'm a believer that there's a lot of shit that's happened in our in our world in our lifetime that you know can't easily be explained away because we're such a dumb fucking civilization sometimes um that it only makes sense that there's something else and you know we can't be alone, and especially now with this whole uh, with the the UAP report that was uh, that was put out, uh, it's it's only adding fuel to the fire, which kind of scares me because there are a lot of whack jobs that that will take this into a whole different direction, and and that scares me just a little, just a wee bit. Well, a lot of people don't realize about that report is there is actually two reports. The only one we saw was the one that released to the public. The other one is the one where all the stuff is not redacted. And it talks about – because the one that came out basically said there's 144, whatever it was, cases. Well, we can't determine what 143 of these are. So that Mm. right there tells you literally they are not going to say – what those 43 are. And if you're looking at the world and how everyone's like, oh, we got all the best scientists and everywhere, no matter where you're from, we can study this. If you can't figure out what 143 of these things are, it tells me, of course, you know what they are. You know exactly what they are, where they're from, what they're doing, but you're just not going to tell us. Because like you said, there are a lot of idiots and stupid people out there that are looking for the answers that I don't think they're really to receive yet. What, what, I'm going to show. I'm going to show a little video for one sec, Mike. Before we go on that point, just from uh, uh, a report with um, Neil deGrasse. Check this, check this out. Better evidence. That's all. Uh, so, in other words, they could be visiting intelligent aliens from another planet. They could be. No reason to rule that out. But what is presented in support of that contention is insufficient to convince a skeptic. Very interesting. So, so go ahead, Mike. I was just going to say now the, the whole UAP, like again, unidentified, it's almost like a wink and a nod. Like, yeah, we don't know what it is, but there's that whole other side of the, of, of, of the story that that's kind of come out is that, uh, that these may not necessarily be, you know, alien, uh, alien technology per se, and could just be, you know, some countries with some super advanced tech that, you know, the states don't know about. And that kind of scares me too. The fact that there could be stuff that's, you know, been developed that, you know, frankly, we'd have no real protection against if it's, if it's that, you know, that good. Yeah. One, well, one of the things I love about ancient alien theory, Mike, which I'll go on, John, I'll get to you in one sec is, is the fact that a lot, the, there's a lot of theory there about, all the you know the Mayan calendar, and then there was that side of it, and then you know how they focused, you know their their arrival in Peru. Chris was showing me this about how it's got the most natural resource. It's it's got every resource from the planet in Peru in this particular area, and so when you see sort of like you know people landing and and there's like landing strips on these mountains, just really cool stuff. Higher, uh, there's all these like all these. Um, uh, one part of the drawings, born, right? like, yeah. One part of the it's really, really cool. But then, if you look at some of the technology that was built by people with sticks, eh, it's kind of like how would they able to take these sticks and melt these interlocking bricks that move? You know, and it's very interesting mm-hmm. to me on that side. Go ahead, John. 
No, it's kind of funny. I know you guys talk about movies and stuff, but I love like Ridley Scott, what he did with the franchise, but I really love Prometheus and mm -hmm. my whole growing up, I always wished the aliens or these other species were like those big white dudes uh, mm -hmm. from those movies where it kind of, where we're just kind of like pawns in a larger game. Um, I right. don't, I don't, it's the whole thing is just super, uh, I mean, I don't want to, it's just, it's just, it is very, I, I wish more came out of those reports. I think more will come, um, but they, it's it's I don't know. It's super it's super crazy because you talk about the technology, and uh, I'm looking to get Bob Lazar on my podcast. But you read his books. You, uh, if you've seen a lot of his interviews, especially the one with Joe Rogan, he talks about that technology that predated like the stuff we're doing now. They were doing in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. And so if if you not tell, if you if you can look, look, look at us as uh, so people in the, the world, hey, we don't, these aren't aliens, but now you're saying they could be a maybe it's maybe it's a military weapon or another country, another entity that has these technology that isn't out there yet. Or I mean, people were scared of the 5G six months ago, so <laughs> I know for a fact they're already on 10G. So <laughs> maybe if this isn't an alien, I'd rather it was an alien as opposed to another country with drone capabilities and science and all the stuff that could, I mean, I could go into the whole, like, I think the whole race to the moon, I, I don't know. I don't want to get too off the rabbit well, hole go ahead, here. Man, go it's, for it's, it. it's part go of the, for it. it's part of the subject, buddy. We'll get, we'll, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. on the there subject just, list. There, I've subject always list. thought, uh, and then we can talk about Stanley Kubrick and The Shining and like all oh, that stuff too. That's my guy. Um, oh, you just triggered me. <laughs> I, I've done a lot of like random free research on my just when I have, I have free time. The whole race, space race for me, I don't, and I don't want to come off as whatever because I met astronauts and I, I love the people at NASA. But there, I think part of it was a race just to say you're first to slow down another country's capabilities because you don't want some other country uh, to say they were there first and everything. Mm -hmm whether it's the United States or any other country wants to be the first country to do something. And what's the whole thing that makes it super weird to me is that we went to the moon, but we haven't been back since. Now we're going to Mars or where are these other people like Elon Musk from other countries who want to fund, let's go to these other planets. Mm. How can we, if, if we're going to Mars and there's maybe a hundred people that know exactly what Mars looks like, because we're supposed to just believe that that's what the image is on Mars. Cool. I'm okay with that. But you're telling me we don't have people studying on the moon 24-7? Like, why wouldn't we? Because we've already been there a handful of times. We're not going to go back again. It seems super weird. And Stanley Kubrick, and if I don't know the documentary is for the uh, the shot. I think it was Room 43 or whatever it is. Yeah. It's on Netflix. It's a, it basically breaks down his connection to being hired by NASA to film possible moon landing and moon footage after his 2001 space odyssey, which it, it's just crazy. And someone asked it here in the comments about these people that had a heads up on technology or stuff, how they film stuff. There's a lot of stuff in that movie that they have yet to even replicate in movies today. That's how cutting edge that stuff still is. Kubrick was a genius, man. He's genius. my guy, buddy. Like I, I, genius. I, Shining is my favorite movie, and I could put it on to put myself in a better mood. Like, The Shining is brilliant, and I could just, like, that's, that's, people are like, what, that's a good time movie? Yeah, The Shining is a good time movie for me. I love that flick. <laughs> <laughs> what do we think of Karen's question? Do we really need to be concerned with protection after years of sightings and encounters and no problems yet? I'm, I'm with her. Is on that this, in relation to, like, the Space Force or something like, like, I don't. Space Force. <laughs> it, it, there, the timing of that was very suspect as well. I'm not saying nefarious, but mm -hmm. that got put in place before all this stuff started coming out about what we know, what we don't know. Um, and I don't know exactly. I'd be curious um, to see how Space Force works hand to hand with someone like NASA or SpaceX and that those type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but a threat could be anything. A threat could be biological. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be through malware. So. If we want to, my my whole problem with the, this whole thing is, if we want to protect ourselves with a space force for asteroids, or we got to send uh, drill miners onto an asteroid to blow it up before it's the Earth, <laughs> I'm okay with that. But you can't tell us that you don't know what this stuff is, because the space force wasn't created to willy nilly look at the stars through a kaleidoscope. It was created for a specific reason. If the, the event there ever is an event that is going to blow up the Earth, or in a sense affect the Earth, whether there is something hitting. Uh, the atmosphere or something like that. It's just really funny when Donald Trump says it, though. We got a space force. 
It would be great. Oh, I love we it. We were going to, you know, and then he was, did he, didn't he take the logo from Star Trek and use that? Yeah, I don't, <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. Well, and he also, John, let me, John, John, let me ask you, hey, uh, one sec, wait, John, let me ask you then. If we're back to the, if we're on the, back to the alien thing for one sec. Mm-hmm. Um, so your first job, a secret service, you go in, are you internally going, man, I can't wait to find out about the aliens? Because oh, that's the question that, that Barack Obama gets was like, cause he's the guy that, well, sorry. I think everyone felt like he was the guy that would kind of be like, yes, there's aliens. But actually, as it became more abundantly clear to me, it was actually Trump was the guy that was going to be like, there's aliens. They're everywhere. It's the greatest. He's an alien. She's an alien. I was thinking this is going to be great. Trump's going to let the cat out of the bag. And then it's just nothing. I so. think there's something topics like aliens or uh, who shot JFK or stuff like that, that in that world, I mean, I love, I mean, I don't, I didn't love the fact he was shot, but I just love the fact that there's so many conspiracies based on the JFK assassination. Um, that that's what kind of drew me into picking that agency. Um, and obviously lying the fire with Khalees Wood. Um, the Sentinels, Kiefer Sutherland, and stuff like that, where I'm kind of like, okay, this is why I want to do this because these guys look cool or girls look cool. Uh, but I don't I mean my now, if you're going to ask me if I've been to Area 51 or specifically Groob Lake and seed stuff, um, possibly sure. Uh, but I don't, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I can't say you see an alien or you see it all. Like, the, like I, I think what it is, you can't. There's not like in a book like National Treasure where all the secrets of every president are going to put down, this is this, this is all this, aliens here. Uh, there is stuff, obviously technology and weapon testing. That's why I find Groom Lake so fascinating. If anyone has time to go research that in the nuclear test sites uh, and whatever is Area 51, the salt mines and all that stuff, super fascinating. Uh, but you're not going to – you're not going to have a president – or a world leader be like, oh, look at my selfie of a cadaver here. Like, you're just not going to do that. Now, I always, people- Mikey. So I was just, I always picture that. Um, you guys ever seen the movie American Pie, the original American Pie? Hell yeah. Where, where he's got that, his, his older brother uh, has that book that the seniors pass down every year. <laughs> <All of> the- <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, that's how I always envisioned. That's what like every president that comes in. Oh yeah, like that book yeah. and it's got all like the the super secrets. And like you were saying, Brent, when when Trump got in, I mean, he was even talking about it. And you know, you would expect if anybody's going to spill the beans, is there some sort of like unwritten or maybe a written rule that okay, here's the deal, um, we're going to tell you, but this is one of those things that we literally will you know, hunt your family and anybody that knows you down. If right. You- like even for me, I've been privy to seed stuff and people that people wouldn't even like what, and you can't talk about it. It's, it's an unwritten rule. There's also a lot of uh, red tape paper and stuff like that. Even so when you look at a, say a former secret service guy uh, that will write a book, there's a certain time that has to pass. And before you put that book out, the procedure is that you have to pass this through there's a certain uh, kind of collection that goes through here, make sure that certain words or stuff can't be put in this book or published. Uh, a lot of it gets redacted or, hey, change names or locations. Uh, so, but you're not going to have a pre- – there's there's so much stuff that we they can't talk about that you, the, the stuff that's happening right now that you would have no idea what's going on, you can't know. Um, mm. and maybe, the, maybe we deserve to know, maybe we don't. Uh, but, yeah, you're not going to – the book that comes out isn't going to be here are the pictures of the aliens, uh, whatever. That's why I feel bad for somebody like Bob Lazar who has these drawings and you, no one can really say he can or cannot. Uh, a lot of people are like, oh, he's full of shit. They they can't prove his high school records. Uh, knowing the last year and a half, the government, any government anywhere in the world can literally do anything they want. <laughs> and so uh, you, them doctoring high school records for a guy that says mm-hmm. he – it's just I feel bad for that. And if he is lying, he's lying. But if he isn't, he deserves to have his his day in court for yeah. talking about the truth. I mean, it's only and it's but that's like even like Area Fifty One or like the JFK tapes. I mean, just the, you could have an answer. There is an answer, and all you know, all that speculation. It's it's. I mean, all just here you go. But obviously, there's stuff in there that. Uh, clearly would compromise, you know, people, governments, things. 
that it's almost, you know, we'd rather deal with all these conspiracy theorists now and in the future that may make things way worse in our country than coming clean and being like, okay, yeah, this is on us. Hmm. Yeah. Take a no, question from Blue Boy. Yeah, Blue Boy was talking like about Erwin oh, Allen or Gene Roddenberry. Yeah, Erwin Allen or Gene Roddenberry, visionaries or just had an overactive mind? Good question. Visionaries. I, I think that Roddenberry yes. just had the best angle on how, like, like, if you think, okay, how how would a portable phone work? I don't know how to make it work, but I can, you know, I'm very creative. I can think of it the best way possible. Flip it up, way you go, right? Like, I, I think they're visionaries. That's just my take on it. Same with Lucas, man. Like, some of the stuff, and Kubrick, like, Kubrick, just visionaries, man. I, I, Slightly, I love Kubrick's way of saying that when you die, you leave an impression. Your you, your full spirit isn't there. You're not there. You know what I mean? Like, because if everybody died and their spirit was there, we'd be bumping into there'd be so many spirits. We'd impression, especially if something happened to you. Like, so there's an there, Blue Boy. I love that because I think a lot yeah. of these guys who create them are visionaries, man. Like, beautiful. If you, yeah. I just read uh, Seth Rogen's book, and he talks about a really great spot with George Lucas, and he was doing a. Uh, he was doing a um, an interview with Lucas, and they wanted him, Seth Rogen, and his production team to write something for Spielberg and a few other things. And uh, Lucas leaned in and was like, telling him all about the spaceship he had to get ready to go <laughs> for t- during the t- t- uh, during 20, 20, 20, 2012 or whatever. Yeah, it was like, and yeah, Rogen was like, uh, he really is nuts. Anyway, so it was kind of interesting to to so kind of get take that on take, that, John, on the uh, on Roddenberry and those guys. I I, they, I think they are visionaries. Um, mm-hmm. to kind of touch back on like the Kubrick stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the movie Wag the Dog, Travolta or uh, De Niro and uh, Dustin Hoffman. But he basically he's a Hollywood producer gets brought in to cover up a basically create a bullshit war to take the eyes off the public and the media for the the affair the president's having. Well, the, why I love Kubrick and the whole moon landing is. When you can bring in someone like Kubrick and like an NDA or anything out there, if you at the time, I can't think of another director or someone with his his background and the way he filmed stuff could pull off a fake moon landing. Uh, but if it was if they could, it would be him. And mm-hmm. do I think they brought him in to spice around? I, for me, if there's smoke, there's always fire. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's just too much weird if. If you, if all four of us ran a race and we all four finished the race in front of a crowd of people, everyone's going to see that we started and ended the race. Now, the race to the moon, it was just us. Yeah. There was no one there to tell you. When I look at the, the stuff now from satellites and footage, I if I'm looking through a telescope and I see the star or I see the Big Dipper, okay, I can see that. Is it even a really star? I mean, joking. But, but when they send these feeds down, there's literally only 100 or so people a small, small fraction of people that actually know what's going on up there. And we, as the general public, is supposed to just to accept that's what that is. Yeah. It's just, for hmm. me, it's it's super crazy. But Roddenberry and all these Kubrick and these, there, there's people that I, I definitely think, especially Kubrick, he was on to something or privy to something um, because they needed that win to get to space. They, they, they needed that. And I mean, like you look at, uh, I, you know, call me very narrow minded, but you look at the, the ship, like the rockets that they put up back in the sixties. Oh. The and then you fast forward to, 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 to the eighties when, when the challenger blew up, that thing was a like a beast, a tank. And these little, you know, sort of rudimentary spaceships were able to crack the atmosphere and, and go to the moon and back like that. I want to be- like I want to believe. As a kid, I wanted to believe. Yes, I think space is great. And the science, yeah. and the the just to see outside your own house and, and the stars. But you look at Sputnik and some of the stuff that got set up there. It's like, come on, man! That that is a Tiddlywink and Lincoln log put together. That is not breaking. <laughs> That's not getting a hundred feet off the ground. It's just, exactly. but it's just, it, it, we're supposed to accept that because it was. We have to be the first people. It's just super. There is no way. Like if if we're supposed to believe all this, the the moon and the atmosphere that hasn't really changed. Sure, there's more smog, there's more chemicals, there's more ozone breakdown, but that side of it hasn't changed from a science point of view. And we're supposed to see that these challengers, these big things, can go up now and still have an issue. Yet Sputnik went up in seventy whatever. It's come on, man. 
Maybe the moon landing and that whole the whole race to space. Maybe that was just the USA's original GoFundMe. Like it was, yeah, a, yeah a, it was a like, starter. We've got this great idea that that can work, uh, but it it's going to take us about 20, 30 years to actually get the technology. Well, let me ask you guys this: If you woke up tomorrow and they and you found it came out that the moon was actually hollow and a satellite or whatever other conspiracy theory you want to talk about, what would your first reaction be? If I found out it was yeah, hollow, hollow and conspir- it, it was just a so this satellite. giant moon, yes. this giant oh, moon that we wow. see in this. The giant right. moon that we see it's in the sky alive. every it's night. And it's that's not a moon. Pulling it's the, a Truman star. Show. We're the Truman Show. That's what it um, is. Wow. Yeah. What would I do? But there was a moon in the Truman Show, Mike, because when he left the set, yes, the real yeah. moon would have been out there. Uh, I don't buy it, John. Sorry. I'm not. I, the, I'm, the moon is there. I'm saying it's a. Well, I'm it's not a saying moon. it's not. Moon. I'm saying no, no, you say- woke up, though. And you woke up tomorrow and be like, hey, the moon's fake, guys. Would you just accept that or be like, what the fuck else is fake? I got other things to do with my life. So I'd be like, all right, cool. What's next? Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I like no, that. no. See, okay, John. See, see, I'm I'm different. Whereas, like, because I, I I draw all day long <laughs> and watch <laughs> awesome movies and TV show. Wow. No, I would be I would be going through internet things. I would be researching, and I would be like, okay, if that's fake, if the see if the moon is fake, then I would be trickling back, right? But that's right. You know, I'm a comic book guy since I was you know old enough to pick up a comic book. So that man, that would that would again see again as I mentioned off the beginning of the show, like discovering that whole ancient aliens theory and seeing these big drawings in the sand that were obviously made for not, for not people on the planet. They were made for people in the sky when people couldn't fly. Um, right. it's, it, that's life changing to me, to me, because that changes my beliefs. And I'm very strong with, with just, just I, I don't know, I'm very spiritual. I like to feel that I fit on the planet. And I, not to other people's way of life, but I just right. like to feel that I fit here, that I'm, I'm vibing with everything. You know what I mean? Um, so if my I favorite, found out, I, I would I would be researching all kind of stuff. I would be having a blast with that. You know what I mean? I I, my, I would have a lot of fun with that actually, John. Yeah. My favorite part of that of that theory is that you can't draw what you and but you can't draw what you don't know and what you don't see. Correct. So if someone asked me to, you know, here's the Costanza. It's like, oh, we need a Johnson <laughs> rod. I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, sure, let's draw this. And they go, right. no. Right. And, and there was mm-hmm. a little, there's a great story in the, in chariot of the gods where he was with, he was in a school in a class and they asked this little Russian kid to draw a castle in the sky, mm. but the kid had never seen a castle before because he lived in Russia and there's no castles there. There was no, but he couldn't draw the castle in the sky. Right. But, uh, uh, uh Von Daniken or wherever he's German or Austrian or wherever he's, he's surrounded by castles. So he could draw a castle in the sky cause he's mm-hmm. seen one. So the most fascinating part for me, which blows people's minds about the ancient alien theory is that all the hieroglyphics around the world, whether it be Peru, whether it be in British Columbia, whether it be in Australia, whatever, all the inside of the tunnels and all the inside of these, these hieroglyphics they're finding are all the same drawing of the same, of the same kind of little, little, little dude. And I'm like, you can, or, 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 or spaceship in the sky or whatever, which Christians and, and Catholics and all the whatever they're they're gonna decipher that as as a as God coming in and doing whatever, but it made more sense to me that perhaps it would be something floating in the sky, yeah. and that's what you draw because you just saw it. I have a video. Let's check this out for a minute. Let's guys, check we'll it get out. Back to that. Let's Freaky check out videos of things floating in the sky. Freaky deep. that two planes together or is nice, that two nice. ships together? When I, that, when I lived in New, that when I lived in New like- Jersey, I saw, sorry guys, when I just, when I saw, when I lived in New Jersey, I used to go, have, smoke, go on the porch for cigarettes, like every hour, every hour. And man, I saw a lot of cool stuff like neighbors too. I was in a really rotten part of New Jersey, man. It was interesting. And, and one night, man, I saw that classic triangle of lights sit there, hover, doom, and then take off. And I've seen them before. Um, so I have seen like, and then I, 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 mem- I remember again researching it later on in life. Oh, there it is on, on like a video, and it was explained that it was some kind of uh, military uh, formation. But the way it just disappeared was kind of weird, right? But but of course there was an explanation for that one because a lot of people saw it in, in New Jersey there. But anyway, I I saw a UFO, man. I th- I'm I'm pretty sure that was a UFO. What I saw, 
I don't know how you guys you guys have seen that, anything that like that. Like, thing, that floating thing in that video, man, that it's, it looks like a giant Burger King crown. Yeah, or like the up the Super Mario Brothers, the jellyfish that would be at the level That's if you had to right. swim around. Right? <laughs> right. So, John, when something like that happens, um, without giving away too much, obviously, whatever you're allowed to speak about, but when something like mm. that happens where there's like a sighting, is there like a Secret Service memo slash you know, news of the week. This happened here in Argentina. They saw four spaceships. Allegedly this happened here. The Leafs won the cup. Like yeah, I mean, <laughs> all, there mystery, is, there, all mystery, all mysteries. Do you get, you there's know? a, you call it like black hat or there, there are agencies out there that will literally track all this stuff uh, because you do have to record it. And uh, whether it turns out to be a, a, a floating vessel of the ocean or a drone or something, you still have to record all this stuff. Um, so there's not going to be anything that's kind of uh, like, it, and I talked about this when I was with on Dean's show last month. But one of the the crazy things, like that video where the, those guys of the Iranian Sea on the ship, the sailors that saw all this crazy uh, stuff that no one can really know what it is, and they still don't. Um, the videos when they get released. Say you say all four of us are in a park somewhere in Quebec or uh, Prairie in Saskatoon, and we look up and see this. That we all post this video, which is very similar of a UFO. Well, as soon as we post that video, that's going to start trending. People are going to share it. That video, we will all be approached. <laughs> Where did you get this? Where was it filmed? Mm-hmm. Tell me exactly everything you saw, you heard, and then if that video disappears. There's, there's a lot of videos that people record stuff that don't. They get posted for literally seconds or minutes. Wow. They get yanked out. So there are people looking for that stuff, and I think part of the problem is why this whole last year and a half people really pushing for this, uh, this stuff to come out is because people are at home. People are everyone on their phone. Everyone's just sharing stuff. I don't think a lot of these videos are supposed to go viral. Uh, and the ones that do go viral, it's always funny when there's an explanation like by a bunch of other media sources really, really quick. And not saying they're wrong, uh, but it's very, it is very kind of suspect. Mm-hmm. And of those, uh, the uh, the 100 and what is it, 144 that were in yeah, that? 143 report, of them where they can't say what it was. Uh, a super high percentage of those were from were from the navy were they not like wasn't the the navy the yeah navy no a lot of that's military stuff a lot of that is all sailors and high ups i mean you look at some of the stuff that's redacted the letters and stuff these are all go up to the generals and this is aircom and all this stuff like that like, these are just joe schmo sailor number two uh <laughs> like these are real people with clout and right yeah. that can't really talk about it, but they still have to. That's why a lot of these guys, when you see the people are talking now, they're really old. They've mm. reached that point of their life where one, they probably don't give a shit, and two, <laughs> they've, they've passed that that circumference of what they can talk about, and that's where a lot of that stuff comes out. And now they're just considered old, right. you know, crazy. Right? They're, oh, they're crazy. Yeah. Hey, I'm not gonna. He might be crazy, but he still could have seen something. Mm-hmm. I think they gotta have a they gotta have a crazy proof uh, uh, video and go. Okay, well if he can put yeah. his pants on, his shirt on straight, and he can cook craft dinner properly, timed yeah. out, that we know he's not nuts, and then we we allow him to talk and speak and do the things because well, the, the kids from remember remember the original uh, the very first uh, alien crash there. Um, I'm just blanking on the name. Roswell? The Roswell one. The grandkids and and kids are talking about that all the time. And and the stuff that they say is pretty genuine, which which I really like. Um, the reaction of when they of when the father came home and said, Wow, you know, I found this and I found that, and and how excited he was, they would say, you know what I mean? Like he was like the look in his face, like, wow, I found this and it was this and it was aliens and you know, and it was uh seeing those people talk about it is really cool because you know, I I've taught I kids uh, for a huge chunk of my life and my wife and I were talking about kids reactions are very honest you know what I mean and and when these younger ones are talking about it uh it's really interesting really interesting so I like to hear the other views of it definitely I uh I love that because I'm, I'm Catholic I'm, I grew up Christian and I don't but one of the things one of the, the cool things in the history of, like my Catholic my religion is the Magigori. those three kids saw the the appearance of what was the sacred heart or Mary in the clouds and it kind of goes to what you said where if these were older people 
all crazy. They want to believe, but the fact is, kids. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's a there's something more for me, and I love my religion. Like obviously, it's not perfect, far from it. But there's something about that where. God, maybe there's a higher power. Maybe there is something really cool and unique here. Uh, but when it comes from kids, it goes to a whole other level. And like you said, a lot of these kids that saw this stuff back in the 60s and 70s and mm -hmm. now that are talking, they're not so crazy because those kids are only 45, 50. So exactly, this is, man. Yep. there's something, there is something really to that. And not everyone, it has to be crazy to have seen something or been a part or been privy to something. I just exactly. want to, to to what your your hypothetical like if tomorrow morning you woke up and found out the moon was was cardboard, um, that <laughs> that to me like I mean I'm I'm a cynic I'd be like okay yeah. well no whatever yeah that no shock but for a a large population of uh, the planet, uh, maybe not a large population, but a good, a, a, um, what do they call it? A, a vocal majority or vocal minority would, would probably, and those are a lot of the heavy duty conspiracy theorists would, I I'd be scared because all of a sudden you have this vocal minority that feels like they've been redeemed for all the stuff that they've been telling over and over. And I can't imagine any government that would want to deal with that kind of uh, sort of momentum mm. from that outlying group. Uh, so in theory, yeah, it makes sense to like keep a lid on some of this shit so that, you know, this doesn't go south that we can't control it. So that would be my sort of waking up going, oh shit, here we go. Like yeah. it's, we're, we're, it's weird how, 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 how our planet earth responds to things differently. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. Like the racial things that are happening right now, people are exploding about and stuff. Um, and then, as I mentioned, and then COVID, you know, and there's ice. ISIS has stopped now. We we talked about that, which is a good one, man, because all of a sudden ISIS has stopped because COVID's in. Nobody's nobody's questioning that. Like, why why is that all of a sudden stop? Why are we not afraid of that? Because that's what the media was pushing on us before COVID. Be afraid they're gonna come and blow your houses up now. Be afraid you're gonna get sick and die. Right? Like it's just it, it's just weird how all that's gone like that. You know. Well, we always, I always laugh. I mean, I don't laugh because it's sad, but mm. when I was in the government, uh, the big thing down in the United States is there's always a push for Second Amendment gun rights. Well, there'll be a shooting or something, uh, but then once nothing gets accomplished or something does, literally two weeks later, there's a natural disaster or, yeah. or there's a, a pandemic or there's a, uh, another a earthquake or a tsunami that comes through. So there's always something that's always perpetuating people's mind. And once something kind of runs its course, there's something else. What I find interesting is that the alien stuff has, I think is over the years, at least I'm 36 has every year. It seems like it has slowly grown mm -hmm. to a point where it's going to come to a head. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, I, you're not going to be able to stop this, this, this information trade from uh, kind of coming out. The uh, one of our yeah, Karen says, imagine one you know the 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 panic of the public if the truth gets out. But I don't uh, I don't know what, what that means really all the way around because I, I secretly I'm sitting there going, yeah, let's let it all out, let's go for it. But what mm -hmm. is it? What does it mean, right? Because then you're going to have people questioning agendas. It's like, oh well, what a what's the alien agenda, yeah. right? Well, and it, what's it, the it, you know? It and doesn't immediately the, affect a lot of these people, Brent. Like you know, like. Uh, sorry, but, but when I was talking about like all the personal things going on with the racial, if I think that people today, if it doesn't personally affect them, like if they don't walk out the door right. and it doesn't affect them, they don't really give a shit. So yeah, there's aliens out there. How's that going to affect me? Well, I'm still going to go down to the store and have my trouble with that guy. And I don't like this guy. Right. And oh man, that guy's beat. You know right. what I mean? Like, so the aliens aren't really going to affect me. So you know what? I don't really care. That's, there that's so the vibe I'm getting. That's the vibe I'm getting so from the world right now. So his skin comes off his face and he's got lizard underneath him. It's fine. How, how does that affect me? That's that right. doesn't over in New me. York. I'm not going to see long that. As, as <laughs> long as he's buying Superman number 252 and we can talk about it, it's all good. There we go. Well, that's, that's yeah. all. There are, but, there know, are still that's, tribes and civilizations being found in the Amazon that have not mm. been recorded. And, but that has no totally. effect on me. I think it's totally super badass. But I'm never going to go there, uh, but I'm going to read about it. If the aliens come <laughs> tomorrow... If they're going to come out tomorrow, hey, there's life form, there's actually water, there's traces of bugs or uh, microbes on Mars, I, I, I still got to pay my bills. I do not give two shits. Right? If, these things, right? if these things crash into Earth and start going after Will Smith and Bill Pullman, I'm going to have an <laughs> issue with that. But I, I, I get it. Like maybe it's I, – I just – 
I don't know. It's the whole thing is just super fascinating. See, see, part, part of me, oh, I love the, it. I'm, yeah. Sorry, sorry, but I just want to say part of the things with the aliens, I, I almost think that we creatives don't want to know the actual truth because man, there has been an entire industry that has blossomed because of people's perception of what an alien might be, what an invasion might look like, what life on other planets are. I mean, if you're finally told this is what this is what an alien is, and it's so not what you've envisioned, I've been uh, drawing it wrong. It's, oh. it's, a, it's like a major letdown. It's like, oh man, really? They look just like us, except they only have one ear. Oh, damn it! <laughs> or they're just like they're like a light a light beam, or you know something that we can't even see. Yeah, I that would be that's just like the ultimate bummer. It's like, nah, I'd rather. However, know. Mike, to that point though, Mike. Getting back to what we talked about, the drawings in the caves that go back mm, yeah. thousands, hundreds of thousands of years, you can't draw what, what you, you can't know. see and what you don't yeah. know. I can't draw a catalytic converter. I can't draw anything. But I could draw, <laughs> you know, if you say draw a Bret Hart with the championship belt, I'll put some hearts, <laughs> I'll draw a stick figure, I'll put the belt, and that's what it's going to be. Hell yeah. Right? But but I'm not, I, if I haven't seen it, I can't draw it. So let's move on for one second. I want to go on to a little video here and get your thoughts on this, because if aliens are crashing into Earth, how are they going to crash into it if it's flat? Check it out. Oh, gosh. OK. Here's what would happen if the Earth was flat. The center of gravity on a flat Earth would be right in the middle. And the further you got from the center, the stronger that gravity's pull would be. Because of this, you'd never be able to walk to the edge of a flat Earth. A flat Earth's gravity would also make trees grow diagonally on most parts of the Earth, and objects closer to the edge would fall sideways instead of falling down. All our rain, snow, and hail would fall toward the Arctic, which would be at the center of the Earth. The oceans would get sucked to the center too, forming one big ocean in the middle. Flat Earth proponents claim the sun travels in circles 3,000 kilometers above the flat Earth. That means there would be no day and night cycles on a flat Earth, no time zones, no seasons either. So it's safe to say it's impossible we're living on a flat Earth. But some people around the globe are still convinced of this. So, wow, that was that was like one of those. Did you see it? Do you see the creepy guy on the on the iceberg yes. there? <laughs> did you see it? So we're not Asgard? Is that what you're saying, Chris? We're, we're not Asgard? <laughs> we're on the Bifrost? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where are we? Uh, I mean, I think we can, we've all been in a plane at a higher level, I think. And uh, I think we can all agree that there's a certain amount of uh, curvature? Roundness, <laughs> curvature to the earth. John, let's go to you, buddy. Where do you stand on the flat earth? I just don't I don't I guess I don't really get it. Um I don't either, man. Thank you. Thank you. Like I, I, I and I don't it's, this isn't me knocking, but like I remember a couple of years ago, Kyrie Irving, the basketball player, he's a flat earther and he basically came up went on a podcast. He stands by it. And for with with known people like that come out and talk about it, it kind of piques my interest because I'm like, Well, these people can't be that stupid. Yeah. But then part of me is like, well, sure they can. Is, sure they can. He, what if he is right and we are all stupid? And then I'm like, man, I fly literally my entire life, and there you you see the way the the it's just it's like I don't now when you looked at Homer back in Greece, all these guys they didn't know they weren't traveling like we they're a ship for thirty days literally to get hundred feet. They're not seeing the world as we're seeing it today. And for those guys back then to kind of look at it, I could kind of see, well, Pangea is a real thing or all this stuff is real. Uh, but in the 21st century, like, I, don't, I don't know. I, more, I believe more in aliens and Bigfoot and all that stuff than I do uh, the flat earth stuff. Yeah, that's a weird one. I can't wrap my head around that either. But like they talk yeah. about like a huge ice wall, the Flat Earth Society, about the ice wall of the Arctic where the ice wall is keeping certain stuff out from whatever. It's like it's building. That's why the waters are rising. And it's just, man, I it's too far-fetched for me. And I, here's the thing. I'm not knocking these people. Uh, I just, It is very, I don't know, the whole thing's very, I've yet to come across someone. Unique. Like, yeah, no, really you know is. what's interesting. You know what's interesting to me about it. Look at the like. Let's take space out of the equation. Let's take yeah, NASA take out. out of the equation. Let's take all of these things out of the equation and focus on our friends at Red Bull. They went ahead and built the thing and put a guy in it and sent him up as far as he could go, and then he skydive 
Sky dove. Sky mm-hmm. did something out of that thing and landed in a net. Now, while he was up there, there was some GoPro footage of around fucking Earth. <laughs> no <laughs> agenda by Red Bull. For yeah. fuck's sakes. So anyways, that's I'm just saying. It's like, oh, well, that's Red Bull's working with NASA. All right, stick it in your ass. There's a couple of things here. I, I can mm-hmm. I can I can have a good conversation with some people. Come on. Flat? What? Are you out of your mind? Come on, Mike. Right? Don't you know that when you get to the end of the earth, it's like Pac-Man. You go through that little <laughs> teleport that brings you around the other side. That's how it is. <laughs> I mean, I, I would imagine most flat earthers were, were probably, you know, they were big fans of arcades in the 80s. Because, you know, all we had were like 2D side-scrolling games. <laughs> We didn't have 3D <laughs> Mario World. No, no. Um, yeah, the flat Earth thing. I, I again, I don't want to knock these people because there's, you know, it's it almost takes a, a a pretty huge level of intelligence to try and connect the dots to make a plausible, well, in their mind, theory that the Earth is flat. I I think that that takes an, an immense amount of intelligence to 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 try and like Creative. cover Unique, all the bases. Sure. And, you know, take a small bit of information and extrapolate it into some overblown theory that totally is full of shit, as Brent said. But then again, Red Bull is in bed with NASA. So, I mean, it's all it's all bogus. And it is to kind of go back to what we talked about, like, let's like say Kubrick and stuff. Mm-hmm. When he would film stuff, he filmed a lot of stuff in 2001 Space Odyssey that's coming to fruition now in terms of what we're seeing, uh, whether it's how star colors come through a telescope or the planets look from different lenses. Like that's all stuff we're yeah. seeing in real time now with its – so it kind of makes it wonder. We see movies today and obviously if, uh, you guys have seen the new King Kong vs. Godzilla, the hollow earth theory where they kind of talk about kind of well, there's something in the earth. What if – now just throw this out there. What if the stuff we're seeing now, they're they're kind of putting it in our minds subliminally, like Stanley Kubrick did with 2001 Space Odyssey. Hey, this is coming down the line. This is the information I know, but I'm create creatively putting this out there where this could be like no one's and it's just I, for me, it's just very mind-boggling because that 2001 Space Odyssey is so still so ahead of the curve right now. Like mm-hmm. I love Interstellar, I loved uh Aliens, uh Vet Horizon, I love all that stuff. But that movie, to the, it, it, you, it's untouchable in terms of how it was filmed. And there's stuff out there now. People have done research papers and documentaries on this stuff where yes, yes. The, the colors of the like he had it so perfectly done the way it, where it looks now. And it's mm-hmm. there's there's something to that because obviously he knew something or because I, I know a lot of times movies like Ar- movie Armageddon, they had permission with NASA. They worked with people to kind of film how stuff would look hypothetically if it was whatever uh so obviously he was privy to this stuff um and that just goes back to the technology and these ideas they had well before we even got to know it as a general public mm-hmm. yeah. yeah kubrick it's quite- anything that was in a shot of kubrick's was in there on purpose yes. that guy was so meticulous with, with everything he did if you wanted to trick somebody with film or photography because he started with a ca- he started with a camera right um and he evolved to film but um yeah if, if you want to trick somebody he was your guy. He was your guy. Yep. He was grandfather what, Photoshop. There you go. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. yeah now, he, wow, Mike, that's awesome. Yeah. Now we talked. Uh, we talked aliens. Our good. Our good buddies here. Let's just mm-hmm. bring them up for a sec, because you know they're cute and adorable. And Karen. Giant, Karen giant. Williams had a, an experience with giant. one back in 2010. I saw that. Now I want to move to. Um, yeah. What did she say? She. Karen says. I saw something carefree in Scottsdale, Arizona. It hovered over my car. It was late night. It was all over the news in 2010. Memi said us uh, anything but anything else about it. It's uh, it was actually Phil Kessel's. It, it was Phil Kessel's mustache, Karen. Sorry, it was Phil Kessel's. <laughs> but I, but I think she's she's commenting like what John was saying that it was like, like yeah, a lot of people saw it. She was there, but you know what? It got covered up because uh, it's John. Like, like what John was talking about that earlier about how they if it's out there. So, yeah. What are our favorite conspiracy theories? And let's remove those. We've gone to aliens. We went to flat earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm leaving, co- I'm leaving COVID out of it. Cause I'm tired of talking about oh, it. Geez, so yeah, we're, we're, not, do. we're not, we're not doing COVID, yeah. but there's a, there's a whole bunch of them. We've got a handful of minutes left here. John, what's your favorite conspiracy theory that you're right on the cusp of believing? Okay. So <laughs> I, 
I'll, I'll, I'll just pick this one because I think this one is very interesting. There's a bunch of shows on it. Uh, the idea that Hitler actually didn't commit suicide but escaped to South America uh, with the gold um, and actually yeah. died or still, I mean, obviously old age now, but uh, the idea that Hitler actually didn't commit suicide, he escaped uh, with the help of the SS in America and all these people because he, whatever information he had, he was able to – they basically give a free passage to get to South America and get away from there. And there's a bunch of shows out there called Nazi mm-hmm. or Hitler's Gold or whatever. I don't know if it's on Discovery Channel or whatever, but very fascinating where, hey, hypothetically, if this guy, this hate is criminal, that we all are supposedly to believe he committed suicide or whatever shot or whatever, uh, actually escaped. It kind of would change my view of uh, not history per se, because I, I think he got what ha- was going to come to him and the good guys won. Uh, but it would just kind of change your whole idea of that the history books themselves would change because mm. none of the stuff you heard. So that's one of my favorite ones. Obviously JFK is great uh, with the three shooters and who with FDR was part of it. Uh, not FDR, whoever it was. Uh, so it's just kind of the whole, it's just fascinating. I, I love all that celebrity Tupac, Kurt Cobain, Marilyn Monroe, uh, and what's funny, I had a guest on my, my podcast, uh, Michael Berryman, the actor from One Flew the Cuckoo's Nest, Hills of Eyes. His dad was a, a top doctor. He actually went to the Hiroshima nuclear blast site. He actually did the autopsy for Marilyn Monroe. And in my podcast, he talked about how his dad would come home and all this stuff. And before he passed, he basically said, Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe was murdered. Wow, yeah. And she did it. She was actually murdered because of everything going on. And stuff like that where you're kind of like, man, I want to I wanna get in there and hear this stuff. Mm-hmm. I still think Chris- or Mike, what do you what do you like? What's your what's your I favorite? I still think the Elvis is alive. <laughs> that, that's that's the a fun one too, right? That's a fun yeah, one. I saw him at Burger King. Yeah, like I mean, I I think it's again to to what John was saying. The celebrity ones are always they're the most fun because they're the most I don't want to say the most harmless, but uh, I I think there's there's more as like because as a society we seem to like really hold celebrities in, in such esteem that 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 one has withstood the test of time like to, yep. to this day there are still people that are convinced elvis is going to show up at the collingwood elvis fest one of these years <laughs> and uh you know uh-huh. though i think now he's he'd probably be pretty fragile but uh he wouldn't be shaking his hips he'd be breaking them but i, I always i always love the elvis the, the conspiracy theory that elvis isn't dead because it 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 gave birth to so many great jokes and 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 yeah. it's about it so chris yeah oh man who um no i got like some okay so well there's an interesting twist on the manson murders that uh, i've been watching uh lately i don't want to get into it but there's a documentary on it um that you can check out on netflix and it uh a oh. gentleman i can't he uh really went in there and man he he spent his life trying to trying to prove some things in there that were pretty wild um, so check out the Manson family stuff. There's some decent stuff in there, but um, I love the story of, of uh, Jim Morrison is alive. That just popped up. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. I hung out with Jim the other day, but I drank a lot and I don't know what I saw, but um, my, my favorite, I, I like the story of Viracocha and this one is good. See, and this is the most uh, offensive one to so many people too, because uh, religion wise, because Viracocha kind of replaces Jesus in the story. And it's, uh, the Lake Titicaca story of, of, of this uh, individual coming down in a spaceship, landing in Lake Titicaca and popping up. And uh, it's the same story around the world, man. Like it's, 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 it's pretty interesting. So I like that one because of what I've explained earlier with you, but I never related to any of the uh, church goings. I actually had a, 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 a preschool, not preschool, a Sunday school teacher. Um, this one, we uh, this is a quick story. So, my parents took me to uh, Sunday school when we first moved to this small, t- small, small town. And we were all explaining what we wanted to be when we got older. And I, this is my first day in this, this Sunday school. And I said, I wanted to be a rock star, like the guys in the band kiss. I had no idea. I had no, so the teacher basically said, Oh, so you want to be affiliated with Satan? Just like the Saturday, I feel it was Satan. Just like the Saturday. Dude, Thanks, dude, seriously, seriously. All the kids scooted away from me. And I'm like, <laughs> I like rock and roll, man. I'm like six year old. I'm like a six year old, seven year old kid who just loved Kiss, just loved Kiss superheroes. From then on, I was kind of like, wow, religion does not accept me. So I've, I've felt that all my life. So I'm not going to go into detail, but the story of Viracocha is a very, very 
uh, interesting one for for folks who uh, want a different spin on it. Um, like Titty Kaka, man, the whole deal. I can't go into it all here because uh, Brent, actually, we could do one where we could, I could offend so many religious people with, with that whole story, not meaning to, but to me, it, it, it helps me out a lot. It makes me feel like it's I, a, I, it's I, a, I you know it, a lot it, more. It's interesting because ancient alien theory makes the most sense to me. And I'm not even like jumping. I, I know, on, right? On Catholic, uh, like, and John, I know you're a Catholic. I'm not talking about like jumping on religion and whatever anyone wants to believe. Go for it. I don't get like, go for it. Uh, th- that's, we need more of this. We need more people going, cool. You're into that. Cool. You're into that. Cool. Come have a burger. It's not, there, right. but you no, know, I don't believe there, Noah's but, Ark. That's horseshit. <laughs> but the, but the, the idea that um, you can't, you know, I just, the ancient alien theory to me uh, just makes the most sense of everything. Just given mm-hmm. the fact that, that you, you know, yes. Who, who, who helped these people uh, build, you know, build these things and who, you know, uh, uh, you can't draw what you can't see and just all these little things. However, the, when you have a conversation, um, about this, Chris, you're talking about offending people. When you mm-hmm. have a religious conversation, whether Catholicism, whether it be Judaism, whether it be Christianity, whether it be whatever, everyone will hear our point as far as like ancient alien theory. But the, the underlying premise is that God created the universe, so God must have created the aliens, and so that's where the fight begins. That's where the that's where the whole thing begin, begins. Where I'm like, eh, eh, eh. I I, I kind of go with this this other side. It makes the most sense to me. And then the other thing we we're talking about is uh, like our favorites. I'm a I'm a believer. You, John, you're way deeper into this than I am. But uh, the JFK thing, I think it was a mob hit, and. I'm all about that, and I think all the theories support it. That uh, old Johnny there didn't, uh, you know, didn't his dad That's basically great said rabbit hole just yeah. just to jump down yeah. and explore. You know what I mean? Like I, I think, and, it, and then I you think it was a look at yeah. other things. Question, question things, man. I I love questioning things. It, yeah, it makes no. me feel like I belong more and in, in here when I when I do kind of question certain things. You know what I mean? One thing I do say though is I have an amazing doctor. And and when my doctor suggests or recommends things, I do that. I don't go on Facebook to check out anything like that. But yeah. but basically, when it comes to the government telling me things, I'm very well. You know me with the government, Brent. I'm not I'm not a happy government guy. I don't the like government. to believe anything the government tells the me. The government. Well, I love to explore. And nowadays, <laughs> man, you can explore. You can explore. Yeah. This that is the first it. time I've ever gotten religious or political on our show. I think. See, yeah, look, but we're not really know. getting religious or political. Yeah, no, it's we're really we're really of, well, we're really I've, skirting. I've kind of. I I've love the of, idea of questioning and. Don't ex- mm. you don't have to because you've been told to accept something doesn't mean you have to R- read a book, educate yourself, talk to other people, and if someone thinks differently than you, no, who gives a shit? Uh, but if you believe in flat Earth, you're an asshole. Uh, anything else, <laughs> you are a okay. And it's thank and, you. And I'm you. I'm of I'm of the the sources belief. Like yeah, you can read up on stuff, but check the sources. Correct. That, that's what's been killing me. Yeah, information. And, and, the the last you know the the internet has been an absolute boon for for humankind but it's also been probably one of the biggest it, it's almost the balance the good and the bad sort of sitting there and that's the thing especially now there is so much access to information and so many ways now that you can take misinformation and make it seem legit and to those that don't, you know, that are maybe one track mind, uh, it's a that's a dangerous weapon. I mean, it it literally can 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 cause very bad things, as we saw in the Capitol back in January. Uh, you know, misinformation is that's like that's that's like fuel to the conspiracy theorist fire. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's good to to ask questions. Uh, because I mean, that's what we've been doing since we were born. You know, you you just you ask and hope you get the right answers. And if you don't get the right answers, go looking for you know reliable, legitimate sources. John, let me ask you a question. Uh, and this is this is a general question. It's not making fun or hacking on religion or anything. But just given what the beliefs and all the rest of it and all the things that we're that we're doing, and you you have access to. Um, you know, being around some of the most powerful people in the world at one point. Um, this is as deep as this podcast is ever going to get, folks. You ready? Here we go. There's a pretty decent belief in the plant in the world that religion is the big cause for everything that's wrong in the world. 
Okay, just because of the sheer yeah, yeah. no the money, sheer, power, the sheer, yeah, 100%. Yeah. right? So, oh, probably your thing, Chris. It's probably your uh, Chris is uh, you probably got cut out for talking. Oh, uh, you know what? You know what, John? You, you, these these mixed five headphones we have, eh? They're a real pain in my ass sometimes. So, anyways, he probably just hit it. Where do you stand on the issue on, on this thing? And um, uh, as far as agree or disagree, and is there any possible way to fix it? Um, when you look at history, everything's been fought over religion. Uh, the Holy Wars, the Crusades. Uh, I mean, you look at, we talked about ISIS before. Their religion is suicide. If you die, you get a, a th virgins and all this stuff. So I think there's always something out there uh, where you can't, it's, religion is so big in that you can't really stop it. Uh, I think where people get an issue is that you can't really – I don't know. Like I, religion, when I look at uh, religion, and I don't care what it is. I look at the power, the money, the control. Uh, it's just – the whole thing is very fascinating. It is. It is quite something. And I it's, – it's a it's – a, I never like talking about it, especially on tour. Well, Mike, you want to get on? Uh, Mike, no, you want to get in on this? But we're gonna go to a, we're gonna go to some tour talk and rap in a no, minute. I was Mike. just gonna say XTC, man. They they had it right in the eighties with Dear God, you know. That <laughs> just listen to that song. They had it right. My uh, yeah. the, the the whole uh, just before we obviously uh, end this, but the I can hear you, Chris. The issue is a lot of times, and I always I've a bunch of friends that are atheists, and we never we always have really healthy conversations. I want to know whatever, and we're like, well, God doesn't exist. God doesn't exist. And then my my always question to them is, well, if he doesn't exist, how could you be anti God? And so we always have kind of like these conversations where <laughs> these covers you have to have these healthy conversations. No religion is better than the other, uh, but keep each other in check. And I don't think I do think a lot of times people do get. Uh, they, 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 they interpret their religion, how they want to interpret it. And that kind of affects, uh, some other things. So Chris, you can read, can Chris hear me? Chris, can you hear us? Chris? Hello, Chris. All right. I'll get to him. Uh, John, why don't you talk? Uh, you just got off tour of doing a couple dates. I'm going back out in August. Yes, uh, I you heard just that. did, you just, you I just did. Some... Good... There you go, Chris. Oh, Chris was there. Now he's not. Now he's back. Anyway, she just did some dates with these guys. Uh, tell me about your first experience going back out live. Uh, Mike, I just spoke to our boy yesterday for a quick little chat, and he said he's going back out. So looks like people are going back out. John, uh, tell us about your live experience. Uh, yeah, well, that question just popped up here. Uh, you just keep talking. We'll figure Chris out. <laughs> cool. Oh. But the, que the question that popped up, how to excuse a Catholic church. Can I answer that? Oh, oh yeah, in the, in the chat. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. We're getting real. Jason Boris, jeez, J JP, I what's up, buddy? I, How are you? This isn't me getting like what I. I just saw the question. I know we're trying to move on to the segment, but there is no excuse for it. I think people who were part of what happened and uh, the reading the stories. I know I talked to Dean about this a couple weeks ago. I I wasn't aware of it when I saw the news article. It came through the United States. Very like. Two second blurb. This is what happened. Well, I did some research. I obviously saw you guys and the network post about what happened, the atrocity. And you can't forgive that. And I, again, I don't care what religion you are. You do something awful and evil like that. You have to repent for that. And th th something has to happen where it never happens again. And I feel for those kids and families. It's super sad. And it's it's one of those things too where it, just because you're Catholic or Jewish or yeah, you know. Muslim or whatever, like you. You can't break the law. You can murder is murder. Like it's that's where I, that's religion loses me. Where people take that too seriously. Jason Boris, the last quote when I first tour I did with Jason Boris, he said to me, "I never trust anyone that's never done acid." <laughs> so hi, Jason. So what's it like with with crowds and live again? So uh, I did uh, through the pandemic. I did. 49 or 51 shows, mixture of drive-ins, uh, some indoor venues, obviously a different capacity. Uh, and then the last run we did uh, with Smith & Myers was all outdoor, indoor shows, full capacity, mandates, no masks. It was super uh, – it was so different. Like I remember the first drive-in show we did in Philly in front of seven, 800 cars at the ballparks. And instead of people clapping, it was people honking horns or shining their flashlights. It was super weird, <laughs> but I got so used to it because I think you needed to because this is our for the that foreseeable future. That was our life. We had to do it if we 
for the bands that went out there and did this stuff or got creative and doing these different shows. I think music is so important to people's lives and it, it helps people. It heals people. Um, it doesn't care what music you're in. So to be part of that uh, was super awesome. And sure. There's a couple shows where people had to sing through face masks or socially distant. And it's, I mean, I'm not, you don't even pick sides there. It's like just, just to have the opportunity to go out there and see bands and at least for your own mental health, just to listen to music or see some of your friends out was beneficial to me. And now as we move forward and shine down, kick it off in a couple of weeks and dates through whatever uh, it's, it's, it's great. I think it's, it's awesome. And I'm glad to see uh, Britain will be out there soon. So it'll be good. Yeah, you know, I'll be out there. I'll see you out there somewhere. I'm sure it's going to be yes, uh, a couple of festivals. I think. Uh, a couple of festivals. There's a few things happening there. So it'll, yeah. be, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, you know, not all musicians, but there, I, I imagine there's a segment of musicians who not necessarily got tired of being on the road or got tired of playing in front of people. I mean, most careers you get to a point where if you're playing the same song you played 30 years ago, it's a drag. I wonder if this 18 months has sort of uh, made these artists realize how really important that connection to the fan, especially in the live setting is. And if that's, if that's going to make for, I don't want to say better shows, but a, a, a different attitude playing live that maybe had we not gone through the pandemic, uh, they'd be in a sort of a different head. It's funny. Brett, obviously you're a tour rep, but it, I, when I saw that Leonard Skinner was supposed to retire before the pandemic, well, they've already scrapped the last world tour. Like they're ready to go. They're going to keep going and create music because they came out and basically said, while we were at home, we forgot – uh, or we, when we were home, we didn't realize that we had before the pandemic, had we retired like we we're supposed to, we'd be feeling like we are now, and the feeling sucks. We miss the crowd, we miss the music, we miss our brotherhood and sisterhood. Um, so it is kind of curious to see bands like that, the Doobie Brothers now having Michael McDonald join this rest of this whole world tour yeah. and stuff like that, where it's kind of it's kind of cool. I think these bands are really going to appreciate. Uh, their time at home, or they appreciate their time at home, but now it's time to kick ass again and help these people help each other. I think the gratitude right now, like a bunch of the guys, you guys know Hoogie and people we tour with, our biggest mm -hmm. gripe has been the minute we're backstage somewhere at a festival, it starts raining out, or catering's not as good as what you the minute I hear someone say this catering sucks or all oh, this weather sucks, I if I've if I can get away with it, I'm going to stuff that person <laughs> outside a tent or just put them in a rain puddle because I, if you, everyone's suffered this whole year, and I don't care what career yeah, path buddy. you're in. And if you're going to be in this field and bitch about dumb shit like this, then you, you, you should have reassessed your life. John, my daughter, can, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. John, my daughter just, Brent broke my daughter into the industry here and she's just going out uh, on the road again with some Kingston locals that are very, very popular and another, popular and she says the same thing you do she is freaking out dude she is just like pacing like and i'm like taylor you're going out in october you're going out all across canada and then you're going to all the states and then who knows you may go to europe and you know oh but i can't wait you know and if anybody complains <laughs> who's the uh what band what band is she working with um can i talk about it brent probably not so no? it's a big, King, okay. a big Kingston band. Cause I don't, you know, I, don't uh, know I, I get put two and two together. Gotcha. It's, it's not Kingston. tragically hip, obviously. It's so yes. it's, it's I, I'm band. living in Kingston here. Um, but it's the other one that was out with the stones there. Yep. Did the show. So yeah, so she's, and she, so Brent's been training her. She was out in Vancouver and uh, she decided she didn't want to be behind the mic. She wanted to be behind the stage. Like after she saw what Brent did and uh, she had to move back here from Vancouver to here to Kingston, Ontario when the COVID hit, because everything shut down, we all know, right? But now, now she's booked to go back in, John, and she has the same thing. She's man, anybody complains about this? <laughs> and I, I, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> That's because I can't yeah. wait to go back out. Everything's going to be great. So, well, yeah, brother, I agree. Brenton will be dealing with these venue guys that probably yeah. before COVID have been crusty or just kind of like, oh, this sucks, another metal show. I'd be curious yeah. to see your take. I think people, nah, at man. least what I've I, seen, that these promoter reps have been super – a 180 from a year before. Yeah, so the live was never that guy, but yeah, I'll, you can tune in tomorrow. I'll be on the Dean Blundell show tomorrow uh, oh, yeah. with, uh, with uh, a handful of people talking about going back on tour again. So there we go. John, Sweet. buddy, we talked yes. aliens. We talked area 51. Uh, we talked the moon. We talked uh, this guy, uh, but let's talk <laughs> about, 
this. Let's talk about this because you've got yourself a hell of a podcast yourself heard on the Dean Blundell Network. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that as well as what were you thinking in this picture and where can people buy this? So go ahead. Uh, in that picture, I was thinking of someone bitching backstage at a show. And I'm looking through their soul, <laughs> drinking their blood. I know uh, thousands of ways to make you disappear. Yeah, yeah, and they will disappear too in some of these festivals. The so I started the podcast at the onset of a year and a half ago, or whatever. The whole world changed, uh, just to kind of stay busy and creative. And I never really thought I was going to do anything serious with it, like just for me, just to keep learning and talk to cool people, and whether it's martial arts or human trafficking or conservation or whatever. And it kind of blossomed and bloomed into what it is now. And uh, just it's just me basically talking to a guest, whether it's an actor. Uh, the portrayal of characters or a character in a movie or show that I resonated with, why it would help me create my career path or a wildlife conservationist or a photographer from National Geographic or a, a victim of domestic abuse or just basically anyone under this huge security umbrella. And I just have a free talk where I get to ask questions that a lot of these guys and girls aren't asked a lot because uh, I found that if I could research an answer, um, I don't know if I really want to ask that question myself. But if I do have to get to a certain topic, I could create a cool way of asking this question and get the answer maybe a little bit differently. So it's been a blast. And everything with Dean and you guys, and it's just super – it's kind of cool because I never I jumped in the network. I only do Hoogie Show, uh, the Mark Hoogie Show, but the Nerd Dad podcast, and like I said, the Fucked Up, uh, your guys, and there's a bunch of the, the Java, Journey for Java and stuff. So it's just super cool to see like all this stuff kind of grow and people kind of have fun with it. And, uh, I was never a podcast person before this, but I can't get enough of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm all streaming and all that shit. The Journey to Java is the best one on the network. Mm. But thanks for thanks for listening, John. Next to this, yeah, one. no, it's, it's good. <laughs> Anyway, so we are breaking or we're going to break uh, in, uh, after this, as we mentioned, uh, to go on hiatus for the summer. Yes. But John, you're like our last like official guest. You as are far John. As, like, thanks our, for coming our, on too, buddy. Official yeah, guest sure. of of the season. Are we doing seasons? Whatever this is. You're the last one. Um, thanks for joining us, man. We really appreciate it. No, everyone check awesome. out everyone I check like out Spear Talk on the Dean Blundell Network, uh, Spear Talk Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, all the rest of it. Uh, John will send you a personalized photo like this of him yes. drinking coffee that he'll sign uh, anytime you want. And uh, that's uh, Steve, uh, Tony, and Claire, uh, his buddies uh, that uh, – <laughs> That uh, he wanted me to make sure that we profiled. So, nice. cool. thanks, John. Thanks yeah, for next coming, on, man. Uh, next time I'm on, we'll talk about Chernobyl and all my weird stuff with that. We'll get do it. We'll get even love weirder. It. I we'll like it. it. Freaky deaky, my friend. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Check out Don on tour with Shine Down throughout the summer and all the rest of it. Check him out at Spear Talk. All the good places. Spear the uh, truth, John. y'all. Thanks, buddy. Right we'll see you next Thank time. You. Thanks, John. It. Yep. Thanks, guys. And Kim's been Fun here. The old, hey, Kim, I got your Doobie Brothers right here. <laughs> Just Kim. Kim Kim's said, been here all. Thanks, Kim. Thanks for being here for the show, Kim. Yeah, I, Kim, Kim Sutherland. Who would, have thought, though? Though? who would have thought that Michael McDonald would actually get back together with the Doobies, man? That's crazy. What a beautiful name. I just think it's funny because just the, the other day I watched, I, I went down another YouTube rabbit hole and wound up on the classic albums, uh, Steely Dan. Oh. And they, they went through the making of Peg and they mm. interviewed Michael McDonald talking about his experience doing the Peg. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, how about, how about awesome. that? What is it? The 40 year old version when they all have to sit around and watch that, uh, yeah, watch man. the Michael McDonald uh, oh. video in the, in the, in the, in store. the store every oh, day. Yeah. The same. But it's the yeah. same damn song. <laughs> hear Yamo be there one more time. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Yamo break your foot. Yeah. Uh, and I still, to this day, one of my oh, favorite damn. SCTV sketches was Rick Moranis doing uh, Michael the McDonald's. Best. The best. And, which resonates to me just driving across town to a studio just to get in to record tours. And then, you know, he just keeps running back in. Such a long way to go. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, uh, he's, but he's uh, arguing. He's he's arguing the he's arguing the, the, the recording contract, back, and then he runs back, back into in. the studio just in time. Yeah, just a long way to go. Yeah, thanks. Uh, okay, we got some things that people to thank before uh, we let Mike go. We got Blue Boy. Thanks, Blue Boy, for joining <laughs> us. John is an alien. Shh, we knew that. Karen. <laughs> Uh, it's Agent John Bond. Haha, <laughs> Karen, thanks for coming on. Kim, thank you so very much. Kim was always adding a whole bunch of 
cool things to the mix. Um, and Kim Rue, thank you very much for coming on uh, and joining us. Uh, we all looking at different parts of the same elephant. Uh, Mike is more looking at the elephant's ass. Uh, <laughs> where else are we going here? Whole bunch Jason, of great people. Jason Boris liked my my Doobie Brothers joke. Jason Boris, again. Chris, you were not around for this part, but Jason Boris and I toured together a very, very long time ago. Oh, okay. uh, Jason, Jason, correct Jason. me if I'm wrong, Jason. I believe it was Jet Set Satellite or Limb Lifter that you were doing front of house for. Limb but lifter. Jason, Jason's Jason's favorite line: "I've never trusted anyone that didn't has never taken acid." So it was very, very. Ooh. And I was like, "Wow, is did this we just tour? become friends?" I was like, <laughs> "I was like, uh, is this?" Uh, Hi, Karen. Uh, I was like, Jason, so I'm like, is this what touring with adults is like? So, yeah, that was, it was kind of crazy. Hey, Jason, ah, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, All right, Michael. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. It's that time in the show. <laughs> this, yeah. When, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to say where can we find you because I can find you everywhere out here in the West. But where can everybody from Alberta right. East find you? The same places, man. It's been it's been fun. And um, I know I mentioned the last time I was on, like, I started doing Showcase, which has been like awesome. Yeah, and I've I've been watching Showcase a lot more now, and <laughs> mostly because I'm yes I'm I'm narcissistic and I want to hear myself on TV. But I it, <laughs> I, I just realized because I don't honest to gosh I I don't really watch uh, a lot of TV per se. I'll watch some sports, uh, and and now I've you know this past weekend they had the uh, the Star Wars summer marathon on. So of course you know. I've, sitting around flipping through and stop on rogue one or solo. And I, I get it now. Cause I have some friends, even uh, my friend Tiff, who's out in Regina, she's like, I, I hear you everywhere. And it's like, I can on my TV and I'll hear you. And I'm, and I, to me, it's like, Oh, that's, that's cool. I appreciate that. Ha 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 ha. But literally I'm like, Holy shit. Uh, there, there are some breaks where I hear a lot of me, which is like, it's, it's mind blowing in, in a sense. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. weird because, you know, you talk to like 12 or 13 year old me and you said, you know, Hey, you're going to be, you're going to be a voice on TV a lot when you're older. Like, yeah, whatever. Uh, it's, it's pretty mind blowing and, and very cool, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm all over. I'm all there. You can't, you can't yeah. be without so much so that my children have now will turn to me on the couch and go, is that Mike? Is that they're, like, they're like, is that Mike again? I'm like, nice. yeah, that's Mike again. And you know that's what? Mike, it, I think I've said this before. For me, it was cool. Like even like early on in the pandemic, because my parents, you know, there, there were periods there where we only lived seven minutes apart, but because of pandemic, we couldn't, you know, I couldn't go over there or, you know, you talk on the phone the odd time here and there. But, um, for, for them, it was cool because they watched a lot of um, those like nature shows like Alaska, <laughs> the final frontier. Uh, I think it's like Jewel, like the musician Jewel, her parents were on one of those Alaska shows. Anyway, I, I do the the imaging for, for Cottage Life. So they would hear me and they'd be like, oh, there's Mike. So for me, it's like there's that emotional like, oh, you know, my parents can hear me. And it's like, yay. So. Uh, when, when I hear stories of, you know, you tell me that the kids are like, is that Mike again? Or I have friends that are like, Hey, that's Mike on that. And like, that's cool. Like that to me is like, Oh, that's, that's a neat little thing that I'm pretty that's a legacy. My happy. friend, that's what that happy, is, dude. That's awesome lucky to do so. But, and black widow's coming out, right? Yeah. So, oh, dude. It's a shame. We don't have much more time because there is so much yeah. to touch on it next next episode there is dude the low that like, last loki that that there was a uh, an extra scene in the oh last loki god. right which i was immediately going oh my god chris we need to talk about this yeah i know right uh, and black widow and like the other day was it today or yesterday um uh hugh jackman uh yes. tweeted out that picture of the claws and then yep. feige so is there gonna yeah. the whole Spider Man. Next week. That's next next week. week, I'm thinking I, I'll have right. seen. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'll have seen Scarlet oh. Witch or not Scarlet Witch. I mean, uh, Black Widow by next week, by next episode. And sorry, not to 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 go nerd because we're over time. No, go but, go. Uh, the one thing that blew my mind because we talked about Knights of the Old Republic, the video game yeah. that Darth Revan is actually now going to be canon or is brought back into canon in the Star Wars universe. So at some point we may see uh, Lord Revan and that whole. Wow. Uh, and I'm thinking. What a great story. With give, give that to our boys who are, to our, are doing everything right now. Right. Like. 
And I, wow. I, I had to go on to YouTube again. Part of that rabbit hole is mm-hmm. somebody has actually put the the two endings to Knights of the Old Republic. They've oh, done yeah, like the whole play through the good and and the 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 evil. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there going, oh man, like this 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 could make some really really cool stuff down yeah. the line for the whole Star Wars stuff. But we'll talk we'll talk about that on the next. That's the next week thing. I just watched Episode Three again uh, the other day, and I was like, yeah, this is pretty good. This is all right. What, Revenge this of the Sith. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is all oh, right. Dude, that's my favorite one. I, I can't wait. Oh, it's like, it's like, you know why? Because it hurts me to watch it. It just, it, it's just like, it's so sad. Oh, I know. And then Hayden power. Christensen had, mm-hmm. and after that, he had to go <sighs> buy a farm in Uxbridge and grow potatoes. So, or got because of the public. For, anyway, yeah. So, we should do an extra, maybe we should do like a two hour uh, show next week if we can. <laughs> oh, she's going to be a big one. <laughs> yeah, we should. We the, should. Last, yeah. the last show, we got to bring JJ, we got to bring everybody. So, if you're yeah. watching this, listeners at home, hold on. Kim. You guys are funny and weird. Thanks, Kim. Kim. Thank you so much. That's our right point. On. Our point. This is a comfortable place for people it that is. are funny and weird. So come here and be funny yeah. and weird with us anytime, Kim. That's Join right. us. Michael, next week, get your, your get your pants on, your talking pants on, because next week it's two <laughs> hours. Nerd try, to, us. try to get that uh, try to get the other guy to crash it if, if he's not do, if he's not doing anything, you know. Well, you know he's uh, he's he's a bit of a, a little bit of a program right now with that. Yeah, he's uh, in there right now. Yeah. Guy, so, uh, anyways, it's but, an uh, open invitation. Will, Mike, as long as you show up, I'm happy, my friend. Oh, we'll talk. We'll we'll nerd out. Uh, all and right, Dean can Dean can laugh at us, so it's all good. Totally, uh, boys. Pleasure, and uh, yes, uh, aliens are real. That's what we've we've discovered. Freaky Cause, deaky, mate. Because I'm pretty freaky deaky. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Buddy, Guys, all right. Have a, have a great night. We will talk next week. Thanks, buddy. So one day, it'll be cool when the three of us could actually do an episode together sitting in the same room, maybe when you're around, right? Like I'll the three of us having a beer, having a drink. My Hopefully Mike's kind of watching here still, and the three of us can actually sit down and do a live episode together. How cool would that be? So in October, I will yeah. be in the vicinity of Ontario for a yeah. week. So uh, it'll, be a thanks- it'll be a Thanksgiving uh, extravaganza, That'll be cool. If you will. And oh, we'll good. get everybody together in a room. Dude, to that was a great episode. But, awesome. You know, the, when, when we got into like the intense conversation, I couldn't hear a thing. And then it came right <laughs> back in when he stopped talking, when he just finished. So well, that, you can oh, catch it on the replay. You can catch no, it on I the can, replay. No, I can, but I wanted to hear like right then because I, I I really enjoyed tonight. You know, like I really did. Yeah. I actually felt like I could talk about a lot of things. In, yeah, that, yeah. You know, bug me about religion and not the things that everybody's talking about. The things that bug, a lot of things that bug me about religion go back to when I was a little kid. And that's what religion does. That's my view on it is it takes little kids and it makes them scared. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all. But anyway, dude, I got to go to the bathroom. We've been on here well, for an you, hour and a half. You go to the bathroom. I still got things to get to. I got your, I got your really? new comic. So you go ahead. I've been on here for an hour and a half, man. Let's bring Lonnie in. Let's bring Lonnie in for a minute. Okay. Lonnie likes to talk about ancient aliens. Let's bring Lonnie, Lonnie in says, for a minute. Lonnie's playing a video game. She says, no, we, I can yeah. hang on. I can hang on. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, thought, I, I thought that was a great Hold ending. Hold the bladder for a minute and talk. Wait a minute. Not that one. Sorry. Hold okay. the bladder. So, well, no, that's, Hold that's your bladder and talk about this. Okay, that, okay about that's this. coming. That's coming uh, next week. That will that should be available. Issue two of Skeletron. We're going to the full. Uh, the first one was 15 pages. Number one. Um, this yeah. one, we're going to the full 25 page format. Lonnie, how many pages? 24 pages, 25 pages, full format. We're going to print it the same way Marvel does their comics. Um, so. It's gonna it's gonna look just like all the other ones. The, the first one was was re- let the man go pee. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> but so issue two is coming out, and I'm loving it. It's all done. We're done up to issue four, my friends. Issue one is sold out. Sorry if you did not get issue one, you will not get you will not get it. And Unless, those for, uh, for those just joining us for the first time, which we had a lot of new viewers this time, thanks to John because he's got a great base. Base uh, Kim, everybody awesome. that that joined us, uh, Chris. I'm going to, this is the, the fun part I'd like about his bladder. But Chris is a published comic book artist, uh, yeah. starting with episode or uh, issue one of Skeletron that's already out and sold out. And now issue two is on the way. So you guys better get on it. And, um, and, uh, cause it's a, it's a rad thing. So why don't you go? I'll, fi- I can finish this up with the thing and, and the, and the, and the microphone shit and all the rest of it yeah. that we got to do. Yeah, I had a rough and go with can- mine today, too, man. We're going to have to, we're going to have to talk to our friends. But yeah, Blue, thank you. Dean Blundell. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for respecting that I have to go to the bathroom. And everybody else that showed up tonight, 
Brent. Thank See you, man. You. I- <laughs> You go. Go take a leak. Look at you looking at me, looking at me having to go pee. That's old bladder Chris. That's what you used to call him back in the day. It's old bladder Chris. Man, that was a fun episode, everybody. Look at me. I feel, you know what I feel like right now? Chris is gone. Mike is gone. I feel like Garth in Wayne's world when he's all alone, right? And Wayne left and he's like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I'm all alone. What am I going to do? How can I possibly handle this? Uh, I can handle it by thanking my friends at Blue Microphones, sponsoring the Brenton on Tour podcast, Kids on the Escalator, uh, the the Yeti X that you see, as well as these Mixify headphones right here that are working pretty good when they work really good. But right now it's been a little bit, uh, a little wacky the last couple of weeks uh, for us. I don't know what's going on, but they're very comfortable. They sound great. They sound amazing. Uh, and we got to thank them. So I'm going to run a little graphic from them. Stand by. Excellent stuff. That's the new edition of uh, the new issue of Skeletron issue two coming out tomorrow that you are coming out soon from Chris uh, that you can catch uh, big thanks to our guest, John. Uh, Guarneri from Spear Talk uh, podcast, obviously a huge um, podcast on the Dean Blundell Network. Great guy. Lots of stories to tell. Obviously, we're talking conspiracy theories. We're talking about our alien friends and so much more. You'll catch the audio version of this on Thursday on the Dean Blundell Network and wherever you get your pods. Normally, Chris would back me up with a good times rad dudes, but he's not here. So I guess I got to do it myself. My friends, thank you for joining us. On the Kids on the Escalator podcast on a Tuesday night. It is the second last episode of the season. Catch us next Tuesday. We're going to wrap the whole thing up with a giant two-hour episode. We're going to have a ton of guests. We're going to talk comics, movies, wrestling, tons of stuff. Hopefully some of the people that joined us this year will join us next week. We're going to wrap this up, and then we'll see you guys in September. So that's what we know. That's what's going on. Good times. Rad dudes, everybody. Thanks.